maker of the universe made you out of love. That's what his only son Jesus said. I in them and you in me, that the world may know you have loved them even as you have loved me. God didn't make you as a plaything that he would throw away after 70 years. He loved you as much as his only son. In fact, as a unique expression of his only son. That's why you're here. So that our maker's only son could develop the universe through you as he has planned. The whole direction of our life is to be from the inside out so that God can fulfill his will for us and the world. Our Creator has planned to live the life of his only Son in you in a way that he will never live in anyone else. But of course we believe the lie that we're self-created beings who have to make what we can of life on our own. This misconception corrupts our natures. The most obvious corruption occurs when we believe that there is no such being as a creator. We believe instead that all we have is the creation. So we look to it rather than to him, outside rather than inside. We are really meant to live by the life of our maker's son within us, so that we are motivated and animated by his energy. This love of his would fulfill us, but we have rejected that reality and looked to the world around us for the fulfillment that only our Maker's love can give us. Thus, uh, instead of living from the inside out, we live from the outside in. Our whole being becomes turned inside out, perverted, corrupted, no longer working the way it was meant to. Personality has been defined and described in all kinds of ways and diagrams. None of them seem to completely express all the mental and spiritual experiences we have, but there is one that helps to show how our inner lives have become corrupted. It pictures our personal life as expressing itself on three different levels, uh, spirit, soul, and body, through the capacities of our spirits, uh, the real innermost you, we communicate with the creator of the universe. This is the way he is able to sustain our lives in himself long enough for us to begin to understand how thoroughly our nature has been turned inside out. We cannot change our egotism and egocentric self-existence. Indeed, this misconception that we can change ourselves is the very heart of sin, the, the very essence of our belief that we have made ourselves. The problem is not lack of willpower or understanding. The problem is an incorrigibly willful belief that we have made ourselves and control our own destiny. We simply do not see ourselves as part of our Maker's Son. We believe we made ourselves, and our current personalities make it impossible for us to think or act otherwise. Only our Maker's Son, who is still within us, can change that. Only he can untwist our natures and displace them with his own. This reality was expressed in his son's death at Calvary in 29 AD. Only by bearing the effects of our autonomous sin within himself was he able in the integrity of his own nature to sustain our existence despite our natures. This foreseen and foreordained event in eternity can be actualized here in time only by God himself. 
as you adapt your thinking to this fact and walk by faith in this reality, so the Creator begins to work within you and give you intuition about your actions and behaviour. As you walk in this light, you have fellowship with Him, and the blood of Jesus, that is, the vital life of our Creator's Son, cleanses you from all sin, all separateness from Him. We have a lot of wrong ideas about sin. We talk about the terrible sin of fornication, or the sin of stealing, or the sin of pedophilia. These are not sins. They're sinful actions and immoralities. But sin is regarding yourself as self-existent, self-made, independent of any creator or God. That's why we assert ourselves and put down others. And it's why we are unsure of ourselves. Because we are surrounded by people and a universe that we can't control. Yet we can't change this way of thinking. We automatically worry and fear and bluster, but we don't seem able to change. This is why God has allowed our free will, free play, until we see the monstrous world we monsters have made, and accept its renewal and ours, wrought in eternity, by him, outside time. Only then do we begin to know our spirits, our innermost beings, as we really are in him.